All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to take the first of our favorite new features. This is a simple one, but a much needed new feature. It's the use of row ID over primary keys. Now, prior to Apex 4.1, Apex for the longest time could only support forms, uh, you know, in tabular forms, where the table had a primary key with either one or two columns. All right. If you're using a surrogate design, then this was never really an issue. Right? But if you're using natural keys, then having primary keys with two, three, four, five columns even is not terribly uncommon. Okay? But with Apex, you had to jump through hoops to put a form on top of such a table. That's no longer the case. With Apex 4.1, we can now use row ID, which just gets right around that issue. And in fact, this is now the default for your forms, form and report combos, as well as your tabular forms. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this new feature. Now, to demo this feature, I had to put together a bit of a contrived example. I'm going to go into the SQL workshop here and into the object browser. And we're looking at these demo tables. A lot of you guys are familiar with the demo tables because these are the tables used in the sample application. One of the tables is demo employees, I'm sorry, demo customers rather. And you can see what the data looks like here in that particular table. Now, what I've done is added demo employees, really simple table as you can see, as well as demo managers. And then I added a third table, this is a relationship table, managers to employees to customer relationships. And you can see what this particular table looks like. And on the far right, we have this relationship description column here. Now, the important thing about this table, when we look at the table details, you can see that it has a primary key that uses three columns. So we've exceeded the, the normal limit within Apex before 4.1. Uh, just a quick side note, I've also added some UI defaults so that when we get to the form, we see select lists rather than the regular text inputs. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to create a new application to uh, work with that particular table. I'm going to go here to create in the application builder. I'm going to select the database type. Then I'm going to jump down here to instant application, which is also new in 4.1. Call this Apex 4.1 new features. We hit create and voila, we have our new application. And now I'm going to add a form and report combo on top of that uh, relationship table we just saw. So I hit create, we choose form, and then form on a table with report. Here's our relationship table. And we'll continue through this wizard. The page level options are fine. I do want to add a tab just so we can easily get to the page. I'm going to display all the columns in the report. The link to the form is fine. Form page details are fine as well. Now here's the new feature. So in the past, we didn't have this option. It was simply set to the primary keys, and we could select up to two columns. But you see the issue, right? We have three. So we'll leave it on row ID, which is the default. We'll just continue through this wizard. All the columns in the form are fine. All DML operations are good. We'll confirm our selections. We'll go ahead and run the app. We'll get logged in here. Here's our new page. And look at this. When I click on edit, we're looking at this relationship here. When I click on edit, we can see all the information. The important part's actually up here in the URL. You can see it's not using any primary key. In fact, this is the actual row ID in Oracle, which is great. So we can change the data here. So maybe these folks actually met back in 2008. We can apply that change. And you can see it processed. And we have the data now in the database. So this is fantastic. All those workarounds you knew before, you can forget about. Right, going forward, you can just use Row ID. Fantastic new feature. All right, I'm going to pass the ball over to Tyson to show us his first favorite new feature. 
All right. So um, I'm going to be talking about air handling. It is something that has been a lacking a little bit in uh, the Apex framework for a while, and I think they really hit the nail on the head in 4.1 with uh, releasing this new air handling function. So I'm going to explain a little bit about um, what it does and then how you can implement it. Um, if you are already on 4.1 and you have not implemented this yet, this is the first thing you should do at the end of this uh, discussion. If you're going to 4.1, um, after you upgrade, this should be the very first thing you do. That's how important I think this is. Uh, so what does it do? Well, uh, it very easily allows you to generate uh, friendly error messages uh, when things go wrong in our applications. Um, unfortunately, that is something that happens. Um, it also allows us to more easily log errors, so when things go bad, we can put them in a table for reference. Another thing that uh, this allows us to do is, because we're logging our errors, uh, when it happens, um, it kind of allows for this idea of proactive enhancement. And what I mean by that is uh, sometimes you'll have users who can uh, they'll run into an issue and they're smart enough to figure out how to get around it, so then they don't report the issue. But uh, that's not good, right? You don't want uh, your users having to work around your application. You just want your application to work. So this kind of allows us to see those instances where maybe errors aren't getting reported. Not saying that's a, a huge case, but it does happen. Um, one thing that uh, one issue that you'll still run into is that uh, if you have old tabular forms or tabular forms that uh, reference the Apex item package, um, when an error occurs on that page, you still have to redirect to the old error page um, because you want to save the session of those items. So in that one scenario, um, it's still going to look similar to the Apex 4.0 and, and earlier in that you get this uh, weird looking error page. Um, and uh, the example I'm going to show you is based off of Patrick Wolf's write-up. You can see a link to his blog there, insideoracleapex.com. And if you go to his blog, you can search for air handling. Um, it's been up for a while, so it might take you a second to find it, but it's there, and it's an excellent write-up. All right, so how to actually implement this. I'm going to step into my demo application. I have already created a page for us, um, and it's basically a report that sits on the EMP table. And uh, I have also added a constraint to this table so that um, the commission, I'm sorry, the salary of an employee cannot be greater than 5,000. Now that's not, uh, that constraint isn't always there. That's just something I've added. And uh, let's see how, uh, without an error handling function, how 4.1 handles it. So I'm going to edit Smith. And I'm going to try to set his salary to 6,000. That's greater than 5,000. I apply changes. Oh, and we get this error. And this is already better than uh, earlier versions of Apex because it didn't send us to an error page and completely stop. Um, it just let us know, hey, the insert didn't work because of this check constraint. So how can we implement what's new in 4.1 to make this even better? All right, so we're going to go and uh, edit our application. We're going to edit application properties. And if we scroll down, we will see that there's a new section uh, called air handling. And uh, there's a text box here for air handling function. If you look at the help text, you can kind of see that um, we can define a function of any name that we want. And as long as its signature looks like this, where it returns this or it takes in this error and returns this error result, um, Apex knows how to process it. 